Good morning. I greet you this wonderful day in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Johnston Sacco coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription. Welcome. This morning, I would like to speak about a very interesting subject that God qualifies anyone for functioning or God qualifies one to function. And when you look at it in the context of human perspectives, you'd realize that God has always gone beyond what is normally expected. Why do I say so? I want to bring some illustrations and I'll read the word. Then I, I believe that the Lord should be able to speak to your life and your heart in a very special way. You see, when David was being anointed as king by prophet Samuel, you would realize that uh, what the father Jesse imagined that would be the people be anointed as king in his family was not what God was looking at. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that all the sons of Jesse were brought before the prophet. They were good in stature. They appeared like men of war. And it is true because we realize when David went to fight Goliath, all his brothers were already in the battlefield. So they were men that were seasoned in war. But God was not looking at that. Until Jesse was asked by the prophet, do you have any other son? And the Bible records to us saying that we will not sit down until the son comes back. And then David was anointed as king. So somewhere else the Bible tells us that God does not look at the physical appearance, but he looks at the intentions of the heart. So I want to say that God is the one who qualifies individuals of people or people to function. It's not about you self-declaring yourself having the capacity to function under God. God has never operated like that. So this morning, I'd like us to read the Bible in the book of Exodus chapter number 4. We are reading verse number 10 and verse number uh, 11, 12, and 13. So you can understand that it's God who qualifies individuals to function. Now, Exodus 4 verse number 10 says, But Moses pleaded with God, O Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been and I'm not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. Then the Lord asked Moses, who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak? Hear or do not hear? See or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go. I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in what to say. Verse number 13. But Moses again pleaded, Lord, please send someone else. Now, I want you to understand that based on the fact, on the reasons that Moses is giving, you do realize that he was the most unqualified, humanly speaking, most unqualified to be the one to be sent by God to go and deliver the children of Israel. But this was God's choice. Moses still was God's choice. And he gives every reason why he should not be the one to be sent to go and do the great task that God has given to him. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that it is not about human qualification. It's about God's plan, purpose, and desire for you to deliver his purpose. Now, I've picked this before, and I want to submit to you that when, when a manufacturer comes up with a product, when the product is sold, it comes with a manual. The manual is the one that defines how the product operates. And you'll be a fool to use a product without reading the manual to understand how that product operates, which is really the mind of the manufacturer. Now, if you disregard reading the manual, you might not use that product to the best of its capacity and abilities because you could miss out on something. For instance, if a product or a machine is supposed to use petrol 
and then you put diesel because of your own understanding, the truth is, then you will spoil the product. The product might not work to the best of its capacity if you do not read the manual and internalize the perspective or the thought line of the manufacturer. So it is imperative that then you have to read the manual to understand the basic and actually the detailed functionality of the product to get good use out of it. Now, it is God who qualifies even the unqualified. It is God who qualifies even the unqualified. What do I mean? Moses knew himself. He knew he was not good with words. He was not eloquent. He knew that he has never been. He is not now. And you're saying, even though, God, you have called me, you want, you're speaking to me, I get tongue-tied. I get stuck. I am a stammerer, and my words get entangled. Moses knew who he was. He knew he could not communicate adequately, but would you imagine that was still God's choice? And you know, sometimes we look at people, we look at individuals, and we wonder why they are doing, they are the ones that are being used to deliver certain things. They might not be eloquent, they might not be smartly dressed. They might not be, you know, camped, but it is still the people that God would desire to use to deliver a certain objective. You see, it is God that calls and God that qualifies. It is God that lifts. You see, we can never wrestle with God. When God desires to lift a person, to bless a person, to utilize him in a specific role or responsibility, it is God who has decided. You see, when you have got parts of a vehicle, for instance, if you put the wrong part in a vehicle, that engine will not function. But you see, God knows who is supposed to function where and who can deliver the objective of God. God's choice on Moses remains God's choice. So I'm saying it is God that qualifies an individual to function. That means God designs or knows the functionality. He knows what he wants somebody to do. And he goes around looking for somebody who will fit to operate and function appropriately based on his desire and his intentions. You can never appoint yourself into an office. You can never appoint yourself into a function that God has not called you to function. Now, the late Miles Monroe said some great words. When you know your purpose, when you know your purpose and you offer it to the world, there will be great results. And many people spend a lot of years pursuing other people's purposes. Some people pursue the purposes of their fathers and their parents. Some people pursue their friends' purposes. I've heard about cases where friends caused a certain person to be married by another person. You got married to a person because of your friends. You see, that is a wrong decision to make. You must understand and appreciate your purpose. Your purpose. And your purpose is best revealed under God. Your purpose is best revealed under God. Now, sometimes people ask me a question. How would somebody know their call? How would somebody know their purpose? And I tell people, today I just want to address a call. Now, I keep asking myself a question too. You see, you must know the things that your heart resonates with. And many times, the things that pain your heart in terms of when you see something is not going right and you have got a desire to bring change, then therein could be your call. Your call when it is served to the world, your purpose when it is served to the world, it will bring great results. It will bring great results. You cannot live in this life living for somebody else following somebody else's dream, 
pursuing and killing yourself to deliver somebody else's expectation. It is not right. I want to say that it is God that qualifies somebody to function. In other words, when you understand your purpose, when you resonate with God's will for your life, there will be great results. There will be great results, child of God. I want to declare to you this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus, there will be great results. Because God is the one that qualifies anybody to function. It is God that gives us the power to make wealth, to function, to function in our purpose, to function in our call, to function in what God desires in our lives. And I want to speak to you, child of God, this morning, that you should never look down upon yourself. You know, sometimes we tell people our dreams and they rubbish them. You tell people your greatest dreams, your desires, and people rubbish you from point number one. You know why? It is not their vision. It is not their dream. When God speaks to you, I can see Moses grappling and saying, God, how would these people believe me? Suppose they say you have not sent me. What am I supposed to do? And God extraordinarily does miracles before and tells him when they, they doubt that I'm the one who has sent you, do these miracles and they will believe. But Moses feels inadequate. And by the way, allow me to submit to you, God has never used people who felt they were really, really qualified. Not at all. God, many times, uses people that felt inadequate. You see, when you are inadequate in your own abilities, then God takes over. You see, if you're capable of doing anything in your life, then why do you need God? We need God because humanly we are inadequate. We don't have the capacity to do things. But God gives us the strength to do. That's why I'm saying God qualifies people to function. This morning, I don't know what is in your desire to do. Whether professionally, whether in business, whether in ministry. I don't know what is it that makes your heart troubled. You know, in terms of making or providing a solution. Therein is where your purpose lies. Have you gone to a place and you feel, ah, uh, this should not have been done like this. It should have been done the other way. Or assuming somebody should be, should have done this before. Or should have done it in this way. You have things that go through your heart and your mind and you think you should have done something better. Maybe it's high time you pursue that direction. Maybe it's high time you sought God to help you achieve your purpose. When you realize your purpose, I can tell you, child of God, your life will never be the same again. And this morning, I've come to encourage you to let you know that God does not necessarily use the people who are qualified. He qualifies himself. He gives you a responsibility. He gives you what you need to deliver your purpose, and he brings great results. Moses, as a stammerer as he was, God used him to deliver the people from Egypt to the promised land. You need to know that. As much as he could not speak eloquently, as much as he doubted his capacity to deliver, God still used him. This is the kind of thing that I want to speak to us this morning. And I came to encourage you. God can qualify you. God can qualify you. If you just look unto him, ask him to move in your life, ask him to assist you, ask him to help you, because he has the capacity to change your life. I believe that you're blessed. Shall we pray this morning? Father, we bless you. Thank you, Father, for speaking to us about qualifying us. In the name of the Lord. I want to thank you for this far you brought us in this call, in this dream. Father, we bless you and we worship you. I want to honor you, Elohim. And I want to thank you because besides you, there is no king like you. I exalt you this morning. Thank you, Father, for the voice that you're speaking to us, O oh God. 
qualify us for the functioning that you have called us in the name of Jesus. Father, I lift you and I bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The Lord richly bless you. I'm excited to have this opportunity to speak to us. And I believe they're going to have a great day in this particular moment. The Lord be with you. The Lord establish you. The Lord give you the capacity to function. This has been your host, Pastor Johnston Sacco, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription. Your daily morning dose of the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You're blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.